Okay, thank you. Uh, let's start with uh, the Cordara embedding theorem. So the theorem says that uh, given a compact complex uh, manifold, X, uh, there are two equivalent statements. So the first one is uh, X is a projective, namely uh, it can be holomorphically embedded into a projective space. And the second one is uh, X has a Keller form uh, whose uh, cohomological class is uh, rational. And here a Keller form on X is a real two form of type 1, 1, and which is closed and positive. And by definition, a Keller manifold uh, is a complex manifold uh, with a Keller form. <laughs> so from the perspective of um, uh, the Kodarva embedding theorem, a compact Keller manifold can be uh, regarded as a natural generalization of um, projective uh, manifolds. So for small deformations, uh, we know that uh, small deformations of Keller manifolds uh, remain Keller. But for projective varieties, uh, this is uh, not long, this, uh, so small deformation of uh, projective varieties uh, might no longer be uh, projective anymore. So there are examples of uh, deformations of object by compressed tori or K3 surfaces uh, which become uh, non projective. So this uh, justifies that the following definition is uh, non trivial. So let X be a compact Keller uh, manifold. An algebraic approximation of X is a deformation of it such that uh, the subset parametrizing uh, projective fibers uh, is dense uh, in the family. And here is the Kodaira uh, problem. So the question asks, uh, given a compact Keller manifold, uh, can we always find an algebraic approximation of it? And uh, here are some known results. The Kodaira problem is known to have a positive answer uh, in low uh, dimension. So this is, of course, the case uh, for curves, since we all know that a compact uh, Riemann surface uh, is projective. And for surfaces, uh, the answer uh, is still uh, yes. It was first proven by uh, Kodaira, so using the uh, classification of uh, compact complex surfaces. And later on, uh, Buda also gave another proof of the same result uh, with a more intrinsic proof, so involving um, the variation of a whole structure, so which is based on uh, Green's density uh, criterion. But starting from dimension four and on, uh, there is this examples of compact Keller manifolds for which uh, the Kodarava problem uh, has a negative answer. And the first series of examples were, uh, was constructed by uh, Kira Wazang. And in fact, her examples uh, even shows that uh, there is this uh, compact carrier manifolds uh, which are not uh, projective for homotopical reasons. So uh, in particular, uh, these uh, answers negatively the Kodarava problem uh, in the very strong sense. Uh, let me also mention that uh, Ogizo also has examples of compact Keller manifold uh, which cannot uh, deform to any uh, projective manifold. So his construction is based on so some uh, special uh, automorphisms on some uh, non-algebraic uh, K3 surface. And here are uh, some other positive results uh, concerning uh, the Kodaira problem. Uh, so the first one is, uh, we know that uh, this problem has a positive answer for uh, some kind of bundles over a surface. So this was proven by um, Flo Hyung uh, Shark. And Jun Yan Cao uh, show that uh, some uh, compact carrier manifolds, uh, compact carrier manifolds with some uh, semi-positive conditions uh, to be precise, uh, also uh, emit uh, algebraic approximation. So here, uh, semi-positive conditions, uh, for example, uh, if the compact Keller manifold has NEP uh, tangent bundle, or uh, its um, anti-canonical bundle is uh, Hermitian uh, semi-positive, uh, then these manifolds also emit algebraic approximation. And uh, so other examples, they are like uh, smooth vibrations uh, in abelian varieties over a projective manifold so this was due to Benoit Clodon, 
And in the sequel of a paper uh, with three authors, so Claude Dong, uh, Kong Bana, and ACD. And then um, minimal, uh, minimal threefolds uh, of Caldera dimension zero uh, are also examples of um, compact Kähler manifolds which have uh, algebraic approximation. So uh, this is due to uh, battery gap. And there is also another uh, conjectural one uh, by, uh, Peter, by Peter Ned, which con who conjectures that every minimal uh, compact Kähler variety uh, should have uh, algebraic approximation. So note that uh, the counterexamples uh, constructed by Wazand uh, are uh, blow ups of uh, product of two uh, tori, and the examples of uh, Oguizo uh, are also blow ups of uh, product of K3 surfaces. So for these two uh, counterexamples, uh, in fact, they are both uh, bimeromorphic to something uh, which has, which have uh, algebraic approximation. So uh, the first result uh, that I would like to talk about uh, in this uh, talk, so concerns the case uh, in dimension three. So the result asserts that uh, every compact Kähler threefold has an algebraic approximation. So in order to uh, introduce the second uh, main result, let me recall uh, for the moment uh, the definition of algebraic uh, dimension. So let X be a compact complex manifold. The algebraic dimension of X is defined to be the transcendental degree of its field of meromorphic function. And a compact complex manifold is called Moishizen if uh, by definition its algebraic dimension is a maximal, which is equal to uh, the dimension of X. And here is a projectivity criterion due to her Moishizen, which says that uh, the comp uh, given a compact complex manifold, uh, it is projective if and only if it is scalar and Moishism. So according to this criterion, uh, for non-projective compact scalar manifolds, the maximal value of uh, algebraic dimension is dim the dimension of the manifold uh, minus one. So the second main result that I would like to talk about uh, is the following. So given a compact Kähler manifold, uh, which is non-algebraic, but whose uh, algebraic dimension is maximal, so among all the uh, non-algebraic uh, compact Kähler manifolds, then uh, these manifolds also have an algebraic approximation. And if we look at um, the algebraic reduction of such um, of these uh, varieties, so together with uh, the work of Uenos and other people in the 70s, we obtain the following uh, variant, so equivalent um, statements, so which is uh, more concrete uh, geometrically, and which is the following. So every compact Kähler manifold, uh, which is bimeromorphic to the total space of an elliptic vibration over a projective variety, has an algebraic approximation. Earlier uh, in the joint work with the Benoit Clodon and Ongas Oying, we already have proven a uh, bimorphic version of this result. Namely, uh, given an LT vibration as in the statement, we can always find another LT vibration which is bimorphic to it and which has an algebraic approximation. So still under the assumption that um, compact complex variety is of dimension three or its algebraic dimension equals the dimension of the variety uh, minus one. If we only assume that this variety has at worst rational singularities and is only bimeromorphic to a compact Kähler manifold, then in fact the same conclusion holds. That is, it has an algebraic approximation. So this follows uh, almost immediately uh, from, um, uh, from the main uh, results, and here is the proof. So let F uh, be a bimeromorphic morphism uh, from a compact Kähler manifold, uh, X tilde, to uh, X. So since X has at worst uh, rational singularities, the uh, higher push forward of the structure shift uh, vanish. And of course, uh, the push forward of the structure shift is still uh, the structure shift. Then according to a result of run, deformations of X tilde will induce a deformation of F. So in particular, according to the main results, 
under uh, the assumption uh, color uh, in blue, uh, there is this algebraic approximation of uh, x tilde. So this will imply that uh, there is this also an algebraic approximation of x. As another immediate corollary of uh, the main results, so let x be as in the corollary above or as in the main results, then invariants of x that are preserved under small deformations, for example, the fundamental group and the Hodge diamond can be realized by some uh, projective manifold. So in the case of the fundamental group, uh, before knowing the uh, main results, so in the same joint work with uh, Benoit and Ondeas, we also obtain uh, the result for uh, fundamental groups. So let me uh, so mention a general approach uh, to finding algebraic approximation uh, that we use uh, in the proof uh, of the main results. So given a compact Keller manifold uh, that we want to find, uh, for which we want to find an algebraic approximation. So the idea is simple and natural that it suffices to uh, find a bimeromorphic model explained of it and also an algebraic approximation of this bimeromorphic model and which induces a deformation of the bimeromorphic map. So uh, given a such a situation, so a compact area manifold and also a bimeromorphic model, so the first question that we should ask is, when is the deformation of the bimeromorphic model x prime induces a deformation of x? So here is a situation uh, in which uh, there is um, a positive answer. So if we take a resolution of this bimeromorphic map by uh, some smooth uh, variety uh, x tilde, and that y uh, be a sub variety of x tilde such that the restriction of the inverse of uh, the map uh, nu to the complementary of y inside uh, the variety x prime is isomorphic onto its image. So then the uh, y is a sub variety which contains um, a local, the locus uh, which is modified under the bimeromorphic transformation uh, nu. So here is a picture of uh, x prime and that uh, y have been represented by the dot and also the curve in this picture. So if a deformation of x prime uh, in which a neighborhood of y deforms uh, trivially, uh, then we can just uh, replace, so in the total space of the deformation of uh, x, x prime, uh, so the trivial deformation of the, uh, neighbor, of the neighborhood of y, so which is colored uh, in, uh, in pink here, we just replace uh, this trivial deformation of neighborhoods by the trivial deformation of the total transformation of the neighborhood of y, and then uh, it will induce, uh, it will give us a deformation of x tilde. And therefore, um, by the same argument, so uh, using uh, runs a result, uh, this will give us a deformation of x, since both uh, x tilde and x are assumed to be smoother. So, um, so this kind of deformation uh, has a name, which I call locally trivial deformations with respect to um, sub-variety uh, y. So let me repeat uh, the definition here, since it is important. <coughs> so let y be a sub-variety of x. A deformation of x is called y locally trivial if a neighborhood of y uh, deforms uh, trivially uh, in the family. So uh, back to our situation uh, where uh, x is a compact cater manifold and x prime a bimeromorphic model of it. So based on the observation uh, in the last slide, uh, we can easily show uh, the following. So if the bimeromorphic model is normal, and if it has a y locally trivial algebraic approximation for every sub variety y of x prime of co-dimension larger than or equal to two, then uh, the, the, the original variety x has an algebraic approximation. And uh, there is another uh, variant of this, uh, sta of the, of this uh, statement where you replace a neighborhood of y by a formal completion of the variety along uh, this sub-variety y. So again, let x uh, be a compact Keller manifold and explain a bimeromorphic model of it. 
and y is a sub-variety uh, such that the restriction of the inverse of uh, nu to the complementary is an isomorphism onto its image. So uh, the, uh, the proposition is the following. So if x prime, the bimorphic model, has an algebraic by approximation such that uh, the formal completion, uh, which I did not buy uh, y hat, of x prime along with y deforms uh, trivially in pi, then uh, x has an algebraic by approximation. So uh, the notation uh, y hat is uh, somehow uh, not a uh, conventional one, but since uh, since uh, we like to uh, keep track of uh, the um, sub variety along which uh, this completion uh, is done, so I will prefer uh, the notation y hat instead of x prime uh, hat. So the proof is based on uh, Ancona and Tomasini beginner's work on uh, formal uh, modifications. So, uh, of course, uh, it is stronger uh, to ask that uh, some neighborhood of y um, is preserved, so deforms trivially in a family. Than uh, the than this um, yeah than this condition. Okay, so according to the previous uh, lemma or the previous uh, proposition, the main result uh, is reduced uh, to the following. So let y uh, let x be a compact Keller manifold. So in a situation where uh, the dimension of x is three, or uh, the the quadratic dimension of x is less than or equal to one. Then what we show is to find a bimorphic model uh, x prime uh, of x, uh, which is normal, and which has a y locally trivial algebraic approximation for every subvariety uh, y uh, with, uh, whose dimension is less than or equal to one. So according to the preceding uh, previous uh, lemma, uh, this will implies that the original uh, manifold has an algebraic approximation. And in the case where uh, the algebraic dimension equals the dimension of the variety minus one, and what we do is to find a bimorphic model uh, x prime of it, and together with an algebraic approximation such that uh, y hat uh, deforms uh, trivially uh, in this family. So here y uh, is a sub variety uh, such that uh, the inverse of the bimorphic transformation to uh, the complementary of y is an isomorphism onto its image. So uh, we see that uh, for her three folds, um, the remaining case which is not covered by her, the first part uh, of the slide uh, is, um, are her three folds of Kodara dimension two. Uh, but this will be, this, um, we will uh, rather, uh, this will be rather considered uh, as the case uh, covered by her, the second part of the slide. So uh, to sum up, uh, this general approach allows us to replace uh, the original variety by some um, bimorphic model of it, whose uh, geometry is uh, would possibly have been simpler or more uh, or easier to be described. But the cost is uh, we have to prove a more precise version of the existence of algebraic approximation. <coughs> so, in the next part of the talk, uh, I will show you uh, how to choose. Um, the bimorphic model in order to carry out the above mentioned uh, strategy. So in the case of three-folds, uh, this can be achieved uh, thanks to uh, the MMP for Keller three-folds. So let uh, X be a compact Keller three-fold. The MMP is known, uh, so the minimal model program is known for uh, Keller three-folds. So in the Keller case, uh, it was recently established by her Kampana, Erhing, and Peter Nen. So as a first output of uh, the MMP, uh, we have the following. So there is an equivalence between uh, the negativity of the Kodara dimension and the property that uh, this manifold is uh, uniroot. The uniroot means uh, covered by P1s. In the case where we have a non-negative Kodara dimension, then X is uh, bimorphic to uh, something which is called a minimal model of X so denoted by her x min. So where x min has only isolated singularities because it has only terminal singularities and uh, the dimension of x is three. And moreover, uh, if you look at a sufficiently large multiple of the canonical uh, linear system of uh, the minimal model uh, x min, uh, then uh, it is uh, base point free. And the, and the map 
uh, will be called uh, the canonical map and then based uh, the canonical model of uh, X min. So still under the assumption that uh, M is sufficiently large, uh, the general fiber of the canonical map uh, will be uh, connected <coughs> And uh, Kf, the canonical divisor of uh, f, will be um, so numerically uh, trivial. So that is uh, C1 of Kf is torsion. So always, uh, we always have uh, the inequality that uh, the color dimension is less than or equal to the algebraic dimension of x. So if we, are, uh, if we have a non algebraic compact Kähler manifold, a uh, threefold, it already implies that the cholera dimension of x cannot be three. So by the same inequality above, if the cholera dimension is two, then you would imply that the algebraic dimension of this threefold is also two. And that, as we already saw, in this case, x is bimorphic to an elliptic vibration. In the case where the cholera dimension of x is one, so let f denote the general fiber of the canonical, um, canonical map. So always assume that M is uh, sufficiently large. In a case where uh, F is algebraic, so since uh, Kf is uh, numerically uh, trivial, then F is either an abelian surface or a bi elliptic surface. And in a case where F is non-algebraic, then F is either a K3 surface or a two torus. So, no, so note that um, F cannot be uh, an Erika surface in this case because uh, an Erika surface has no uh, H10 and uh, H20. And since the canonical uh, vibration is over a curve, so it will imply that uh, the 3 4 X will have uh, no uh, H20, so which will imply that uh, X is um, projective already. So, in fact, in the first case, so since a bielectric surface is a Z mod two quotient of an abelian surface, uh, we can show that. Um, so if X is such that we are in the first case, then X is bimeromorphic to a finite quotient of a total space of a G equivariant vibration whose general fiber is an abelian surface. And in the case where uh, the fiber, uh, general fiber of the canonical vibration is not algebraic. Then, uh, first of all, we have the following uh, beautiful theorem of the Campana, which asserts that if we have a vibration whose total space is compact Kähler manifold and whose general fiber F is a non algebraic K trivial surface, then F is isotrivial. So, with a little bit uh, more uh, work, uh, in this case, we can show that X is bimeromorphic to a finite quotient um, of a total space of a G equivalent vibration, and which is a smooth isotrivial vibration in K3 surfaces or two toroid. So in the case where the cholera dimension of the threefold X is zero, then the abundant conjectures, uh, which is also true uh, for compact field threefold, implies that a minimal model of X is equal to a finite quotient of a K-trivial variety, X tilde. The result of buckley gap shows that if x tilde is non-algebraic, then x tilde is smoother. Then we can apply uh, Movi Bogomorov's uh, decomposition theorem uh, to have the following uh, result. So if, um, if the Kodara dimension of x is a zero, then x is bimeromorphic to a finite quotient of some uh, manifold uh, x tilde, which is the following. Either it is the product of a K3 surface and an elliptic curve, or it is a three torus. So finally, uh, in the case where uh, X has negative Kodara dimension, then as we already saw before, it is equivalent to uh, the unit rudeness of uh, X. So we look at the MRC, an MRC vibration of X, or rather a resolution of an MRC vibration of X denoted by X prime over S. So standard argument shows that uh, if X prime is non-algebraic, then the base of the NMRC vibration is a non-algebraic uh, surface. So in particular, uh, the MRC vibration is a P1 vibration. In this case, we have the following theorem of Saki soap, uh, which says that every P1 vibration is bimeromorphic to a standard conic bundle. 
here a standard means that the base of the, so first of all, the base of the coding bundle is smooth. The discriminant locus of the coding bundle is a simple normal crossing divisor. And also, the PCR rank of the total space equals the PCR rank of the base plus one. So since uh, S is non-algebraic, so either the algebraic dimension of S is zero or one. So in the case where the algebraic dimension uh, is zero, then there exists only finitely many curves in S, and the union of which is a tree, is a tree of a rational curves. <coughs> so in particular, if the, if, if the discriminant locus of the standard Coney bundle is uh, non-empty, then it is also the tree. But on the other hand, we have the following uh, result due to uh, Miyanishi, so which says that given the standard Coney bundle, so if we can find a P1, uh, which is contained uh, in the discriminant locus of the standard Coney bundle, then uh, this uh, irreducible component uh, C necessarily meet uh, other components in at least two points. So this uh, company, uh, this two, uh, this shows that in fact in this case, the discriminant locus is always empty. So a standard Coney bundle over a surface of <coughs> algebraic dimension zero is always a smooth uh, P1 vibration, so a P1 bundle. And finally, in the case where uh, the algebraic dimension of S is one, then S is an elliptic surface. So let me summarize about uh, the discussion concerning the choice of a bimorphic model uh, that we had. So first of all, uh, in the case, uh, so given the compact carrier manifold X, so if the algebraic dimension of X equals the dimension of X minus one, then X is bimorphic to an LGT vibration over a projective manifold. So now given the non-algebraic compact carrier threefold, so if the quadratic dimension is zero or one, then X is bimorphic to a finite quotient of a smooth compact carrier threefold X tilde, which is one of the following. Either it is the total space of a G equivalent vibration whose general fiber is an elliptic surface, or it is a G equivalent smooth isotrivial vibration in K3 surfaces or tori. Finally, uh, in the case uh, where the quadratic dimension is negative, then X is bimorphic to one with the following. Either it is bimorphic to a B1 bundle over a surface with algebraic dimension zero, or it is bimorphic to a P1 vibration over a non-algebraic uh, elliptic surface. So uh, in the rest of the talk, um, I will uh, present to you an overview, uh, an overview of the proof of the existence of uh, algebraic approximation, so in each of the cases listed uh, before. So let us focus first on the first two cases where the bimorphic model is either an elliptic vibration or a vibration in a real surfaces over a curve. So before we continue, uh, let me uh, mention about um, one compactness criterion, uh, which is the following. So let X be a compact complex manifold. So we say that X is algebraically connected if for, if for any general point, pair of points X and Y, uh, we, can, we can find a connected compact uh, algebraic curve inside X, such that both points X and Y lie inside this curve. And uh, the theorem of Campana is the following. So suppose that X is scalar. Then uh, X is motion if and only if X is algebraically connected. So if we combine um, which is a projectivity criterion together with Campana's one, then we have the equivalence of the following. So X is a projective uh, if and only if X is scalar and algebraically connected. So this equivalence so gives us a geometrical way uh, to see uh, what exactly is the difference between a non-projective scalar manifold and the projective manifold. So let us back to the case um, of um, additive vibration or vibrations in uh, abelian surfaces. So as we can notice, in both cases, they, they are uh, vibrations in abelian varieties. So we can expect that 
so if there is a proof about the existence of uh, algebraic approximation, so the idea behind uh, might be uh, similar. And uh, this is uh, indeed the case. And in order to explain uh, the idea behind, so to, um, so to avoid um, so technical difficulties, uh, let me focus on the case where we have a smooth torus vibration. And this is due to a Bernard Clonon. So let F be such a vibration and let G be the relative dimension of the vibration and suppose that the base B is compact. And let J be the associated Jacobian vibration uh, to this uh, smooth torus vibration. And curly J uh, defined to be uh, the sheaf of gems of holomorphic section of uh, the, the B of the Jacobian vibration. So we have the exact sequence, so uh, which can be also Consider as the exact sequence which define the sheaf uh, curly J. So curly J uh, sits, uh, is a quotient of the locally free sheaf uh, E by uh, the local system, which is defined by the high rate push forward of the constant sheaf. And the quotient map here uh, is denoted by her X, so I will call it the exponential map. So by definition, X, X is a J torsor. And so the set of J torsors is in a one-to-one -one correspondence uh, between uh, the first cohomological group uh, with coefficient in uh, curly J. And moreover, if we restrict this uh, correspondence to the subset of J torsors with a muted section, then the image is exactly uh, the torsion part of the cohomological group. Let X uh, B, uh, the map, so uh, induced by uh, the exponential map, um, so introduced in the previous slide, the exponential map from uh, E to J. <coughs> Sorry. Then there is this uh, family of uh, J torsor parametrized by the vector space V, such that each point T inside V parametrizes the J torsor, which corresponds to eta of F plus exponential of T. So where eta of f is the element in uh, H1 of j, which corresponds to the original uh, j torsor. And this family uh, is called the tautological family associated to uh, f. So uh, the result of the benoit clodon is the following. So let f be a smooth vibration in abelian varieties, and suppose that x is a compact carrier manifold, and v, the base, is a projective manifold. Then the result uh, is the tautological family is an algebraic approximation of F, which is locally trivial over B. So let me uh, give you a sketch of proof of this result and then uh, return to the definition of a locally trivial reality so over the base. So first of all, by Campana's criterion, it suffices to show that uh, J torsors with a multi section are dense in V. So this is because um, by assumption, the vibration, uh, so the vibration in the tautological family, so the base is projective and also the, fi the fibers are also projective. So if we can, if we can find a multisection in the vibration, then it, the total space will be uh, algebraically uh, connected. So by Campana's criterion, it will imply that uh, this vibration is projective. So let us look at this long exact sequence obtained by the short exact sequence uh, in the previous slide. So the exact sequence from H to E and then to J. So first of all, um, the map phi, so the first map in the, uh, in the sequence here, is, pro is the projection of a hot structure of weight two to its zero two part, and this is due to the lean. In particular, it implies that the tensorization of this uh, map with Q has dense image in H1 of E. And secondly, what we can prove is that if X uh, is scalar, then it will imply that uh, the first chain class of uh, eta of F, so the, the, the map C is uh, the map from uh, H1 of J to uh, H2 uh, of H, uh, is torsion. So uh, combining uh, these uh, two points, it is not difficult to see that a subset of T so such that uh, this element, so F eta of F plus uh, exponential of T is torsion, this subset uh, is dense in, uh, in V. 
And since uh, we already uh, see that, so the J torsor parameterized by her T in the tautological family corresponds to her least element. And since we, all, we also saw that um, element uh, in the first commodity group, which is torsion, corresponds exactly to her vibration, which has a metal section. So this implies that inside the tautological family, we can find a dense subset of it, such that um, the vibration parameterized by these points uh, has a multi section, so which is what we wanted to do uh, at the beginning. So, uh, so the definition of a locally uh, tri uh, trivial um, locally triviality is the following. So let uh, pi be a deformation of a vibration which preserves the base, and we call this deformation uh, is locally trivial over B. If there is this open cover of the base B such that the restriction of the uh, the restriction of f to uh, the inverse image of each uh, ui deforms uh, trivially uh, inside uh, this uh, this family so what is uh, the only thing which is important uh, to this deformation is that if we have a locally trivial um, so if pi is a locally trivial family over uh, b then it will imply that pi is a c locally trivial uh, for, for every sub-variety uh, which is contained in the final union of fibers of F. So let us back to uh, the general situation where uh, the vibration is not assumed to be uh, smooth anymore. So let uh, F be a G-equivalent uh, vibration in a million uh, varieties and assume that the total space is a compact cater manifold and the base is a smooth uh, projective curve. So let us also make the following assumption that F has local sections uh, at every point uh, of B. So this assumption, sorry, then this assumption can always uh, be achieved up to replacing F uh, by some uh, final, uh, finite Galois base change of B. And the result that we can uh, prove uh, in this case is the following. So for such F, um, there is this also a G equivalent tautological family associated to it, and which is moreover an algebraic approximation and is G equivalently locally trivial over B. So, as in the smooth case, so Hodge, in, Hodge theory is involved in the proof, and this is also the case uh, for this result. But due to the presence of uh, singular, uh, singular fibers, so we have to use uh, stronger uh, results. So the Hodge, theoretic, uh, the Hodge theoretic ingredients that we use uh, in this proof is the Zucker theory on the variation of Hodge structure over a curve and the theory of a generalized intermediate Jacobians uh, due to Hedelin, Zine, and Zucker. So corollary of this, so if you look at the quotient of the tautological family, then uh, it is an algebraic approximation of the quotient vibration and which is again locally trivial over the base. So in particular, as we mentioned before, it is C locally trivial for every sub-variety C contained in the finite union of the fibers of the quotient vibration. So Campana's criterion implies that if the total space of the vibration uh, X mod G is non-algebraic, then the curve of the total space is necessarily contained in the finite union of fibers of the vibration. So this is the same argument that we uh, mentioned uh, before, since the base and the fibers of the vibrations are both algebraic. So if we have a curve which dominates the base, it implies that the total space is algebraically connected. So as a corollary of this uh, result, we see that uh, the quotient of the tautological family is an algebraic approximation of the quotient of the total space and which is C locally trivial for every sub variety of dimension less than or equal to one. So this statement is exactly the statement that we look for in the case, um, in case two in the list. So let us turn to the case of elliptic vibration. So let F uh, be a G equivalent elliptic vibration. So suppose that X is compact Kähler and the discriminant locus uh, is a simple normal crossing divisor inside a smooth projective variety of B. 
So let's also make the following assumptions. The first one is similar to the one uh, before, that F has local meromorphic sections at every point of B. And the second assumption that we make is that the local monodromies of the local system, which corresponds to the smooth part of the elliptic vibration around the distributed locus, are unipotent. So again, these two assumptions can both be achieved up to replacing uh, F by some finite Galois base change of it. Here is the result uh, which um, we obtain in the case of additive vibrations. So up to replacing the additive vibration by a bimeromorphic model of it, so there is this a G equivalent tautological family associated to F, which is an algebraic approximation of it. So furthermore, if there is this of additive vibration Y over Z, which is contained in the original vibration F, which has a weighted section, then the tautological family contains a subfamily, which is an algebraic approximation of F, preserving uh, the formal completion of the original vibration along the subvibration. So the main ingredient uh, in, this, um, in the proof of this result uh, is Nakaya, Noboru Nakayama's work on elliptic vibrations. And this statement, together with some extra work, will imply the statement that we look for in case one on the list. So next, we turn to the case where the bimembry model uh, is, um, is the total space of a G equivariant smooth as a trivial vibration in case three surfaces or tori. So in some way, this is the easiest case among uh, all the cases. So let uh, F uh, be such a vibration. So again, we assume that X is compact scalar and B is a smooth projective curve. So in the case where F is a vibration in, two, uh, tor in a fixed two torus uh, T, then what we show is that this vibration has an algebraic approximation, which is G equivalent and C locally trivial for every subvariety C of dimension less than or equal to one. So in this case, the algebraic approximation is realized by the, fam by the family of tautological families associated to uh, this uh, family uh, FT, where delta here is the parameter space of an, an algebraic approximation of the two torus T. And here FT is a smooth isotrivial vibration in uh, the two torus parametrized by uh, little t. And in the case where uh, the, fi the fibers of the isotrivial vibration is a case with surface S, then since uh, the automorphism group of a case with surface is discrete, so we have a monodromy action of the fundamental group of the base on the fiber S. So since a Kähler class of the total space is restricted to a pi one invariant Kähler class uh, of the fiber, by, uh, according to a result of uh, Lieberman and Fujiki, the fundamental group uh, pi one of B acts in fact as a finite group on S. Therefore, up to uh, some finite Galois base change, uh, we can assume that F is a trivial vibration. And here's the statement uh, which corresponds to this case. So the product threefold uh, S times B has an algebraic approximation, which is G equivariant and C locally trivial for every subvariety of dimension less than or equal to one. And this <coughs> result follows from uh, the following lemma, which is not difficult. Uh, to prove. So let S be a G, uh, be a um, G equivalent case with surface where G is a finite group. <coughs> then S has a G equivalent algebraic approximation, which is a C locally trivial for every proper subvariety uh, C inside this case with surface. So for every finite union of points and curves inside this surface. So finally, let us turn to the case of a unit rule uh, threefold. So um, in this case, so X is either bimeromorphic uh, to a P1 vibration over a surface of algebraic dimension zero or a P1 vibration over a non-algebraic uh, uh, empty surface. So uh, in the first case where we have a smooth P1 vibration over a surface with algebraic dimension zero, then, um, as Nick already mentioned in his uh, course, 
that not every uh, P1 vibration is the projectivization of, um, so of a vector bundle, but it is always a projectivization of some uh, twisted uh, vector bundle that, I, that uh, denoted by uh, E here. So what we do, instead of studying the deformation of the P1 vibration, uh, what we do is to study the deformation uh, of the pair uh, S, uh, comma, E. So here is the result uh, that we can uh, prove in this case. So there exists an algebraic approximation of uh, the surface S, uh, which lifts to a deformation of the pair uh, S, comma, E, such that the induced deformation of the P1 bundle is uh, C locally trivial for every uh, sub variety C of a dimension less than or equal to one. So here is an argument of the proof. So uh, we can distinguish uh, two cases. So either uh, the twisted vector bundle contains a, twisted, uh, a subsheaf of uh, rank one or not. So in the first case, if E has a subsheaf of rank one, then E is isomorphic to an untwisted uh, vector bundle. And in this case, Florian Schacht have, uh, has already proven that such a pair has an algebraic approximation. So the remaining thing to do is to check uh, local uh, triviality, uh, which is not difficult. So in the second case, where E uh, doesn't have any subsheet of rank one, uh, then, then we show that uh, the trace map, so from X2 of EE to H2 uh, of OS, uh, is injective. So the following, uh, the following theorem uh, is classical uh, in the untwisted case, and the statement in the, together with the proof uh, works uh, so, uh, ident so almost identically also in the twisted case. So assume that the trace map or the semi-regularity map is uh, injective, then given a deformation of S, if the trace of the ATIA class of uh, the, the bundle uh, E uh, remains of type 1, 1 along the deformation of S, then uh, the deformation of S lifts to a deformation of the pair uh, S, comma, E. And finally, uh, combining uh, this theorem with the following lemma, which says that there is this an algebraic approximation <coughs> of S, which preserves uh, the neuron severity group of S, uh, this will give us uh, the statement that we look for in case number four. And finally, uh, in the case where uh, we have a P1 vibration over an elliptic surface, uh, then what we uh, prove is the following. So the tautological family associated to uh, the elliptic vibration S, so which, as we already see, uh, seen before, which is an algebraic approximation of S, lives to a deformation of the P1 vibration F, and which is uh, locally trivial uh, over B. So this is the overview of the proof of the existence of uh, algebraic approximation. So let me uh, finish uh, this talk by some, uh, two, with some uh, two uh, open um, problems. So the first one is motivated by the following. The known examples of uh, compact carrier manifolds <coughs> answering negatively the Colara problem all satisfy the inequality that the algebraic dimension of X is less than or equal to the dimension of X minus four. So the question is, does there exist a compact carrier manifold X of algebraic dimension larger than or equal to the dimension of X minus three, which doesn't have any algebraic approximation? So since we already know that, since we already know that um, for compact carrier manifolds of algebraic co-dimension one, uh, they have uh, algebraic approximation. So the remaining case uh, to be studied is the case where the algebraic co-dimension is either uh, two or three. And finally, so if we take one of Wazan's uh, counterexamples to the Kodara problem, and we take the product with P1, then uh, the same argument, uh, so by her runs uh, result, so it cannot have uh, algebraic approximations. So uh, since Wazan's examples exist, uh, from dimension four and on. So it implies in particular that from dimension five and on, there is this uh, uni root uh, manifold 
which doesn't have any algebraic approximation. So uh, the second question <coughs> concerns the case of dimension four. So does there exist a compact Keller uni rule 4-4, uh, which doesn't have any algebraic approximation? Let me finish here. Thank you for your attention.